Artemis. Artemis was a goddess worshipped in the ancient world. According to Greek mythology, she was the twin sister of Apollo and was considered the goddess of hunting, wilderness, and the protector of unmarried women. The Artemis referred to in the Book of Acts was not the same as the Greek goddess of mythology who shares her name. Rather, she was a localized goddess specific to the region of Ephesus, known as Diana in Latin. Her temple in Ephesus was considered one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. The deity known as Ephesian Artemis was worshipped as a queen of heaven, with a focus on fertility and the safeguarding of childbearing. Numerous images of her have been discovered through excavation. In the temple, numerous priests and priestesses conducted animal sacrifices. It is unclear if the priestess practiced ritual prostitution. But regardless, the Temple of Artemis in Ephesus was a well-liked destination for tourists during the Roman era. A unique mythology sprang up around the origin of Artemis worship. The account is hinted to be the city clerk of Ephesus. Acts 19.35 New American Standard Bible After quieting the crowd, the town clerk said, Men of Ephesus, what person is there after all who does not know what the city of the Ephesians is guarding of the temple of the great Artemis and of the image which fell down from the sky? One commonly sold item to tourists is a tiny Artemis shrine, an enclosed cup with a small female figure inside. The worshippers are advised that they can take this portable shrine anywhere in the world and worship Artemis in front of it. Paul spent years in Ephesus and performed extraordinary miracles there, as the gospel made inroads into territory claimed by Artemis. The stage was set for a confrontation with the spiritual forces of darkness. As the followers of Artemis noticed the difference Paul's preaching was having in their city, there arose a great disturbance about the way. Acts 19.23 About that time a major disturbance occurred in regard to the way. In the center of Artemis worship, in a city known for paganism, a morality and greed, the light of Jesus Christ shone brightly. Despite the enemy's intimidations, the church thrived. Baal Who was Baal? Baal was the name of the god who was worshipped throughout Canaan and Phoenicia in ancient times. During the judges period, the practice of Baal worship entered Jewish religious life. Judges 3, 7 New American Standard Bible so the sons of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and they forgot the Lord their God and served the Baals and the Asheroth. The practice of Baal worship became widespread in Israel during the reign of Ahab, and the practice of Baal worship also affected Judah. Baal was a fertility god, thought to help the earth produce crops and people produce offspring in general. Various parts worshipped Baal in different methods, and Baal proved to be a highly universal god. Different religions emphasized different attributes of Baal and created unique sects based on them. In Numbers 25.3 and Judges 8.33, we can observe the existence of local deities, such as Baal of Peor and Baal Berith. The word Baal appears infrequently in the Old Testament as a personal name. These local Baals were thought to be in charge of agriculture, creatures, and humanity's fertility. It was crucial to winning their favor, especially in a place like Pal, where few natural streams or springs and rainfall is unpredictable. This led to adopting extreme forms into the cults, including ritual prostitution and child sacrifice. Jeremiah 7.9, New King James Version. Will you steal, murder, commit adultery, swear falsely, burn incense to Baal, and walk after other gods whom you do not know? Baal is depicted in the sculptures wearing a helmet embellished with a bull's horns, a symbol of strength and fertility. In one hand, he carries a club or mace, likely symbolizing thunder, while in the other hand, he holds a spear decorated with leaves, which could signify both lightning and vegetation. In ancient times, Baal was regarded as the most dominant god, overshadowing El, 
who was perceived as feeble and inadequate. The Canaanites worshipped Baal as the sun god and as the storm god. He is usually depicted holding a lightning bolt, who defeated enemies and produced crops. They also worshipped him as a fertility god who provided children. Baal worship was rooted in sensuality and involved ritualistic prostitution in the temples. At times, appeasing Baal required human sacrifice, usually the firstborn of the one making the sacrifice. Jeremiah 19.5, King James Version They have built also the high places of Baal, to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it into my mind. Baal's priests worshipped their deity with riotous rites that featured ecstatic shouts and self-inflicted harm. 1 Kings 18.28 Before the Hebrews entered the Promised Land, the Lord gave forewarned against glorifying Canaan's God. But Israel bent to idolism anyway. Deuteronomy 6.14-15 King James Version Ye shall not go after other gods, of the gods of the people which are rounded about you. For the Lord thy God is a jealous God among you, lest the anger of the Lord thy God be kindled against thee and destroy thee from off the face of the earth. During the reign of Ahab and Jezebel, at the height of Baal worship in Israel, God directly confronted the paganism through his prophet Elijah. First, God showed that he, not Baal, controlled the rain by sending a drought lasting three and one half years. The stage was set for a showdown on Mount Carmel between 850 Baal prophets and one God prophet. How long will you waver between two opinions? Elijah challenged the audience. If the Lord is God, follow him. If Baal is God, follow him. Here was Elijah's dare. Let's have a competition. Let the God who is God respond with fire from heaven. That was a reasonable test. Baal the storm god should be able to send down some lightning. Elijah gave them every advantage before mocking their futile efforts. Baal's prophets spent hours pleading, shouting and cutting themselves. But he didn't respond. Then, Elijah prepared the sacrifice before asking God to show his people his glory. Fire fell and consumed the sacrifice, the water and the altar as soon as he said his prayer. People fell to their knees yelling, The Lord! He is God! The Lord is God! They couldn't help but notice that God was alive and well. But the Lord wasn't done yet. He reactivated the rain spigot. Elijah prayed seven times in a row before the rain began to fall. Elijah, drenched, dashed down the mountain. He demonstrated that God is alive and well. God is alive and well. You can demonstrate it both privately and publicly in your life. Finally, in Matthew 12, 27, Jesus refers to Satan as Beelzebub, a reference to the Philistine god. The Baalim of the Old Testament were nothing more than demons masquerading as gods, and all the idol tree is ultimately devil worship. 1 Corinthians 10.20 No, I imply that what pagan sacrifice they offer to demons and not to God. I do not want you to be participants with demons.